Hello everyone, just want to come on here, give you a quick video message this morning. Hope everyone is well. Um, reading through the verses, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace you are saved through faith, not of yourselves, as a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So, in the verse says, not of yourselves. Mark and underline, not of yourselves. If the gospel wasn't was part 90% us or 90% Christ and 10% us, then I can understand the scripture being very clear that you had to bring something to the table, as far as an offering, a sin offering for salvation. Um, as you can see, Paul says it is not of yourselves. Jesus said it himself in Romans 28 20 or I'm sorry John um, chapter 6 28 29 the disciple says how, how Jesus how can we work the works of God and Jesus said this is the work of God that you believe on him him who whom he has sent simple the gospel message is so simple and we just want to mess it up we want to offer God something we want to give God something you know um, but if we can just accept the free gift of salvation, the free gift that we can never lose our salvation, the free gift of knowing that we are saved, the free gift of everlasting life. And everlasting means everlasting. If you are in sin right now, or open or close sin, you know those sins are the same in God's eyes, whether it's open to man or open to open. Um, or closed demand meaning not everybody is going to see your sin but if you're doing a sin that everybody sees can, can I tell you that it's the same in God's eyes and who are we to judge that person who are we to um, to come you know condemn a person or say that they're not saved because they're an open sin that's just crazy to me that's dangerous to me you, you're taking out the place of God when you um, when you openly or not openly but when you come against a person because of their sin uh, and tell them there, there is judgment for that We're, we, can, we can tell them out of love and, and out of fear of you know what the chastisement will bring you know we can't judge a person's et eternal destination and you cannot go by their fruit you can't go, go by anybody's fruit because there's a lot of good people out there that are on their way to a fiery hell that do really good things in this world there are really there's a lot of people there that in this good people quote unquote are in this world that build hospitals raise a lot of money for children provide homes for children orphanages and and hospitals and there are a lot of a lot of people are good people that do good deeds for the community and put a lot of their money in the community that's good fruit you might say well they're probably saved no the only way that you can tell someone is saved is they profess out of their mouth they made a profession of faith that they placed their whole weight their whole confidence their whole trust their whole belief in what Jesus did on the cross the death burial and the resurrection and they verbally say I placed my trust there that is the only way that you want to tell that you you are with a true born again spirit-filled believer you cannot know by someone's fruit nor should you be looking at your own fruit because on some days if you're honest you're in sin whether it's open or closed when you understand that this flesh this flesh offers us nothing to God it's corrupt it's it's corrupted it's been says spoilers we're spoiled I've always said we're spoiled meat you know, a sacrifice requires a spotless sacrifice. It's the spotless lamb who takes away the sin of the world. That's Jesus. That's not us. We cannot do it. That's why Jesus had to come and pay that sin debt for us. He had to pay that. We can't pay it. All we're, all we're required to do is believe God, take him for his word, that he sent his only begotten son down to do that. That's it. That is, that is it. <clears throat> and once you receive, once you believe that, you receive the moment that you believe that, the moment you received everlasting life. Everlasting 
It says what it says. It means what it means. Everlasting life. If you can lose your salvation, if you think, if you're watching this video message right now, if you think you can lose your salvation, you are, what you're doing is, you are telling God that it's, it's, uh, it's an 80-20 or 50-50 or 90-10%. 9% him, 10% us, whatever your, your math is. But can I tell you that it's dangerous doctrine to tell someone that they can lose their salvation. Um, but anyway, that's just some quick thoughts I had this morning. That's a little rant there, but uh, just want to make sure that, you know, how you know that you're a son, a son or a child of God? Well, one, do you, do you place your trust in the real resurrection of Jesus Christ according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 4? That's a good start. Start there. Meditate on those verses. Meditate on Ephesians 2, 8, 2, 8, 9. And, and also meditate on Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. Because there's your, there's your eternal security scriptures right there. Once you are saved, you are forever saved. Once sealed, forever sealed. This Bible does not say that he unseals you. So, um, if it does, show me in the scriptures somewhere where it says you can lose yourself. And plainly, plainly, it's got to be plain. How, how plain is the gospel to be saved? Very plain. Believe there should be the same, the counterpart should be the same. If you can lose your salvation, it should be just as plain. Just as plain. So, show me, and we'll discuss it. I have no problem with being wrong. Not one one bit. It is the scriptures. I rest my, my faith, my Christianity, on the truth of the scriptures. If the truth of the scripture says you can lose your salvation, plainly, then I have no other choice but to believe that. There's no, uh, we have to submit to what the scriptures say. But anyway, I just want to say I love you, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.